Is that work for you? I have to say, I'm only doing it for this. I hate mics. I'm only doing this for you. Okay. <laughs> Hi, my name is Minnie, and I work for the Singapore Committee for UN Women. So we're the United Nations Entity for Gender Equality. So we work very hard on raising awareness on issues like ending violence against women. Here in Singapore, one in 10 women report facing violence, and that's a lot. So something needs to be done about that. Um, we have so many migrant workers, especially domestic workers, who come to Singapore to earn a living, to support their families, and get exploited by their employers. Um, get trafficked into Singapore. Singapore is a destination country for human trafficking, so we need to do something to change that. Uh, we work on social entrepreneurship and, of course, getting more women into leadership, whether it's in the community, the workplace, or the government, right? So very important issues, tons of cool stuff to do. I have an amazingly cool team, that lot in the center, jumping up and down. Um, but even cooler is Allah Murabit, who's standing right there. She is a doctor who um, is in Lib Libya, and uh, she is Muslim, and she talks about what um, religion means and how it impacts women, and not in the way you think. She's so cool. So my job get, lets me meet all of these amazing people. There's Professor Aung So Kim, who's a, you know, a mentor who gets um, more girls into STEM, um, Melissa Cree, who runs Beautiful, beautiful People, um, mentors for young women uh, from underprivileged backgrounds, uh, Jermaine Lim, who runs a very cool thing called Nail Social that empowers um, you know, single mothers and the rest, uh, you know, Fazia Kufi, who was running to be president of Afghanistan, uh, Anradha Koirala, um, so amazing, amazing people. And my job allows me to work with the youth and change the mindsets of tomorrow and to create a generation that maybe not, doesn't, you know, subscribe to these issues. So my job would be irrelevant. Sounds like great fun, right? I'm making a difference. The world's so cool. It's amazing. You know, what could I possibly mean? The only reason I'm surviving is because this are, is the principles that govern my life. So, um, Obviously, a lot of the outreach we do, because awareness building requires events. And events are always so much fun to plan. And everybody comes, you know, events like these, so cool, so amazing. Uh, maybe we should get the fuck-up nights people to talk about all the fuck-ups that happen in the background. Let's start with this one. So, for example, very cool movie called 350. It's about human trafficking. It talks about the, you know... The price to get a girl in, in Cambodia, which is $3.50, it is actually that cheap. Very cool, very amazing. Um, we worked with some really amazing people for the premiere of this. And everything went really well. It was a fundraiser to you know, contribute towards events that challenge human trafficking. And uh, you know, everybody subscribed. The W Hotel came in. They you know, sponsored the whole space. It was so cool. You know, everyone was there. The canopies were amazing. We had checked everything. Everything was so, so much fun. So I'm going to go back. Always remember five. When everything seems to be going well, you have obviously overlooked something. Half an hour before the, the screening starts, somebody presses something, and um, an entire phase goes kaput, right? And it's a, it's a hotel. They're really well prepared, so it all comes back. But somewhere in that, the projector short circuits, and we have rainbow-colored smoke going in every direction. And so we call the people, and they show up, and he goes, I think the projector is spoiled. No shit, Sherlock. But anyway, that's, and, and then we're like, so what can you do about it? You know, I think starts in half, half an hour, we've got all of these people, they've paid a huge amount of money to, spawn, to support this. What do we do? And he goes, Oh my God, you know what? I'm not going out there and telling all of those people that this event is not happening. You will fix this. I will give you anything. I'll give you my firstborn child. Just fix it. And he did. It was so cool. He actually did. We started half an hour late, but he did. The event went fabulously. No one knew anything went wrong except us. That was the panel. It was amazing. Everyone thought it was the best event. The money went towards a great cause. No one knew what happened. 
So we do a lot with the youth. And, um, you know, assemblies, I, for those of you who are in Singaporean, Singaporean schools, assemblies, massive things, right? So we were doing an assembly with 1,200 kids, and we had this amazing speakerhood come in. Only she was about four feet something, and her voice could carry up to about there. Right? So we show up at the school, and we're like, oh my god, look, everybody's sitting here, and this is so much fun. And okay, she'd get up there, and they go, yeah, um, we're so sorry, uh, our speaker system's down, so you're going to have to talk without a mic. Oh, um, you know, I have a loud voice, but I can't convey my voice for 1,200 kids. So I'm like, okay, how do we fix this? All right, so you know how the event happened? She was standing up there on that podium. I was standing next to her. She would say something. I'd shout it out to the audience. Then my colleague who was standing down there would shout it out to the rest of the audience. And that's how we had our event. It was fun. It was traumatizing, but it was fun. So, like I said, I get to meet the coolest people, right? But you know what I want? I hate planning their itineraries. So we run our own social entrepreneurship competition, and we have these amazingly cool people flying from all around the world for it. So there was one group, and they said, um, hey, okay, we're flying from Jaipur in India. And like, okay, we'll book your tickets from Jaipur to India. All booked, sent over. And they said, look, you know, we got invited for this conference in Bombay. So could you change my tickets from Bombay to Singapore? Okay, we can do that. A few weeks later, um, so we decided not to go. So can, but um, you know, we need to pick up something on the way, so could you change my tickets to Delhi instead? Okay, fine, we'll change it to Delhi. And everything seemed okay, and then the day before we were supposed to fly out, we realized that there were floods in Delhi. So we were like, look guys, it's, there's floods, it's raining really heavily, there's floods, are you sure you want to fly out of Delhi? I'm like, yep, no problem, we're going to fly out of Delhi. Are you sure? Yes, no problem, we'd rather fly out of Delhi. Okay, so we called him again in the morning, are you sure it's getting worse? Yep, we're going to fly out of Delhi. Okay, we're leaving right now in 10 minutes, fine. So they left, and we didn't hear from them, and then we went to the airport, and they weren't there. And we waited, and we waited, and they didn't show up. So we called them, and their phone's off. Like, crap, what's going to happen now? Okay, then we call everybody. We call the lady's father, the founder's father, and we're like, do you know where she is? No, been on the flight. Oops, okay, so we keep going on and on like this way, and then they finally call us and say, yeah, so um, we got stuck on the road, and we're coming back to Jaipur, and we need to fly out. Like, okay, sure, we'll, we'll fix this right now. And then the lady comes up and says, you know, I was so traumatized by this whole thing. I'm not coming anymore. I'm going to send somebody else in my place, like some other person, and yeah, they'll come and talk. But the whole point of this is we wanted you. You're the founder of the organization. No. I'm, I'm not coming. And that's the moment you're just like, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> but I have to admit, the coolest person in all of this is my travel agent. I've called him at all hours of day or night, any time, going, you need to change this ticket right now. Now, if anybody else had been there, they'd have gone, I'm going to kill you. This guy goes, it's okay, Minnie, no problem. I'll change it for you right now. Give me five minutes. So if you ever want to do a booking, please um, call Alain at BCD Travel, best guy in the world. But, okay, so then we had the speaker who called us and said, you know what, I'm, I'm on this cruise and I'm coming to Singapore. And, um, you know, you've been calling me so many times to do stuff with you. And I thought, you know, I'm coming on a holiday. Why not? I can do something with you. So excited. She's one of the most amazing people I know. So, yes. Okay, you come in here. That's so cool. That's so amazing. Uh, when are you coming? And we call up everybody, and there's like we fix up a hundred events with like, you know, em embassies and other organizations, and you know, all cool. Yes, you're coming. All right, you're fantastic. And then the day before, I call, I message her, and I was like, hey, so I know that your cruise is landing at this time, and um, I'll be there to pick you up. Just verifying that it's this is exactly the location you're coming to, and I get a message saying. Um, Oh, I forgot to tell you, 
I, I'm co I changed my plan to come next month instead. My husband and my colleague will never let me forget the day they got a call where this, there was this high pitched voice going, she's not coming, she's not coming, she's not coming, and I hung up. And that, that literally was my state for the whole day. I didn't know what to do because I had to actually call embassies and tell them, yeah, so you know how you took so much time out and invited all these important people to come? Um, the person they're coming to see isn't actually coming anymore. But it went much better than I thought. Everyone was really excited. And they said, it's okay. The next month we had all the events again. The lady came. She was thoroughly unrepentant and actually asked me to buy her uh, an iPhone because hers wasn't working. But then, you know, when everything goes well, your speaker's here, you think this is what it's going to be like, right? She's talking and everyone in the audience is going to be so happy and so excited and it's all perfect. So we had this amazing speaker and she was in town for five days and the first four days went really well. Well, no, not really. She landed and she said, oh, I'm landing in Singapore. Please don't come and pick me up because I have family there. And they'll come and they'll pick me up and they'll sort everything out. And you're like, okay, fine. So um, she land, was supposed to land like 10.30 at night. At around 11.30, I call her hotel and I'm like, hey, has she checked in? They said, um, she came and she left. What do you mean she left? She checked out. Huh? Where? I, I don't know. She didn't tell you where you're going? No. And I'm like sitting there crying. I lost my speaker at 12 at, at midnight. So she called me at 2.30 in the morning saying that, oh, she went to the, the hotel and she didn't like the room, so she checked out. And she checked herself in somewhere else. Oh, well, okay. And so, well, the next few days went really well. And um, we were on the last day. And we were talking to a school. So now this speaker had an issue where she couldn't have anything that had citrus in it because she would fall very ill. And we were at the school and someone came and offered her a glass of orange juice. Now if you aren't supposed to have something citric and somebody offered you a glass of orange juice, what would you do? She drank it. <laughs> so then, um, later, we're at another event and in the middle of it, you see her going. So we were like, okay, um, we kind of need to wind this up and get her off the stage. And she's doubled over in pain. I'm like, okay, go to a doctor right now. Take her to the doctor. And she had, had to take an injection that knocked her out for the next eight hours. And she had a flight to catch. And other events to go to. And the worst part was one of them said, no, we don't believe that she's in pain. You, I don't care what you do. You come here and you explain to all our guests why she is not here. And you answer on her behalf. But I don't know anything about what she does. No, you get your ass here and you do the work for her. And I did. And she made a flight, despite all of that. So, um, even though the nonprofit world is a fantastic thing to do, it is very stressful. Very, very stressful. But that doesn't stop me, and it never will. Because ultimately, it all contributes to making the world a better place. And so, being a glutton for punishment, I now also do events for two more nonprofits. Thank you. We have time for a few questions, if I can hold you on the stage. Okay. Or I can start. Um, a number of your stories were about people bailing on you at last minute. Uh, was there a case where you bailed on someone at last minute, and how did you handle that? The answer to that is yes. I have bailed on someone at last minute. but. Um, Thankfully, being in this situation and knowing exactly what it does to you, um, it, it gives you the strength to say, well, okay, I'm really very sorry. I can't make it. But let me try and find you someone else who can take my place and possibly do 
as good a better job than I can. Um, so yes, that's what I did. Uh, I'm pretty sure that if you invited that person, they're going to be standing here talking about the bitch who bailed on them. But I did have an excuse. Like I had like salmonella poisoning. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, we're entirely self-funded. We don't get money from the government or the um, UN or from anyone else. So we fundraise to do every single thing that we do. Um, we reach out to corporates, we reach out to individuals, and we reach out to well, anyone who will be willing to support the work that we do. And it is very tough because everyone wants to fund um, the environment and child rights, but violence against women is not sexy. Um, I grew up in a household where I had parents who shared every task fantastically equal. They both worked, they both did everything at home. I'm an only child. They were really not well to do, but they brought me up in and gave me everything that I needed, a very good education, the opportunity to do everything I wanted. And um, it pisses me off that other people don't get that. So no matter what this is, I still have the privilege of being up there, doing a, a, my, a job, something that gives me a purpose every day, and there are plenty of people who don't. So no matter how stressful this is or the crazy things that happen, and these are just a few, I mean, I've done everything from running across Singapore to find one particular shoe that a speaker wanted, one, and she ultimately never wore it. But it's... It's still, it's so cool. I mean, for all their idiosyncrasies, these are people who are changing the world 10 times better than I could. And they might be crazy, but they're fun. And they're really amazing. So that's why I keep doing what I do. How did I get into it? Um, I don't have fun. Yeah, uh, when I moved to Singapore seven and a half years ago, I knew I wanted to do something in women's rights, children's rights. And um, UN Women had an internship at that point. I applied. Um, I was lucky enough to get it. And then I refused to leave. <laughs> it's been seven years. I'm still here. <laughs> Um, I get to go out and meet more crazy people who could possibly create the world that I'm working to achieve. Many will be, uh, many will be back at the very end for...